Plan but bad for the football team from Southern California, where the sun shines a lot, the UCLA Bruins. The Bruins on the road against the tough Oregon Ducks. And you know that Ducks don't mind a puddle here and there. The conference standing in the Pac-10. The Southern California Trojans remain undefeated. The UCLA Bruins are sitting right behind them. They have uh, a date with them on November 19. And so this is a big ball game for UCLA as they still pursue their hope of making the Rose Bowl. The Oregon Ducks, on the other hand, also have bowl hopes. The Ducks with a record of 6-2. and two, That's their best mark since 1964. But you've got to have a little luck sometimes, and bad luck bit the Ducks last Saturday against Arizona State. Oregon starting quarterback Bill Musgrave, running for a first down, was hit straight up by Arizona State linebacker Rodney Dillard. It resulted in a broken collarbone on the left side. Bill had surgery yesterday, and he is out for the season. But it's an enthusiastic crowd capacity here at Oxen Stadium in Eugene today as the Oregon Ducks assemble under the goalpost, and then they'll make their vote for the sidelines to face UCLA. Bob Gracie, these Ducks are facing a wounded Bruin upset last week by Washington State and knocked out of first place in the national vote. Well, they probably lost a chance at a national championship last week. If they lose today, they'll probably lose the Big Ten championship and a chance to go to the Rose Bowl. The pressure is on UCLA. I can remember a few weeks ago talking with Troy Aikman up in Seattle, and it was kind of misty, and he says, I don't like to throw the football in rays. I don't, don't throw it very well. well. I never did either right, with small hands. But the key for UCLA today is they've got to be able to make first downs, and, and first down is the key down, because if they get in passing situations, Oregon has a very good nickel package, five and six defensive backs, and they're number one in the Pac-10 and taking it away. On the Oregon side, however, when Musgrave has not been in there, they have not run the ball well at all, yeah. because against Southern California, they only got 22 yards on the ground, and in the second half last week against Arizona State, they only got 48 yards. Well, no question that Bill Musgrave was the heart and soul of that that offense. Pete Nelson, the starting quarterback today, has started three times in the past and won two. And how many times have you seen that when the star qu uh, quarterback or the player on an offense or defense goes down, everybody else comes up and rides it up and plays much better? Yeah, the offense run. is going to have to do that today, and they're going to have to run the football. Well, Oregon has never beaten UCLA here in this stadium. And Rich Brooks said yesterday they're determined to break that string. Well, the University of Oregon was the site for the motion picture Animal House. And those of you who saw that picture may well remember this building, the administration building. President Paul Olam sitting here in his office. And it was in this room, in the motion picture, where Trooper expired. The goal line kicking off will be Kirk Dennis. Bruins have won 30 of the 44 games played. That 41 to 10 game last year, much of that scoring was done late by UCLA. It's a very high hanging kickoff, very short at the 13 yard line by Wills, turned upside down at the 23. And that's where UCLA will go to work, and we join Mike Adam Lee. Keith, I was in the Oregon locker room before the game. Coach Rick Brooks told his offensive linemen, protect the passer. Teams that have protected the passer against UCLA have been able to burn the Bruins. He told his defense he expected UCLA to try to run it down their throat. Protect against the run. Contain the run. And he told his underclassmen, win one for the seniors. This is their last home game. Give them a memory they won't forget. Keith. 14 of them are leaving. And so here we go. The weather is good right now. A storm expected later in the day. It's very pleasant conditions. And UCLA will start on the ground with Eric Ball. A 215-pound senior. He's hit by Kamar and Ali. But a good gain for Eric Ball as he moves it out to about the 29-yard line. Close to six yards on the carry. Here's your lineup with Aikman at quarterback, Estwick the fullback, Ball, as we said, the tailback, Far and more wideouts. The big people up front for the Bruins, Austin Minifield, Meyer Cornish, who has been outstanding this year, Zeno and Page. High formation. That's ball checking. And gets the ball and runs into a wall about the 31-yard line. 
for the Oregon Ducks defensively. And this is perhaps where the strength of this football team is right now. What were the injuries? It's Brock, Cusano, and Taylor, the three big guys down. The backers are Kozak, Whitney, Ali, and Brantley, and two starters are out of that linebacking four. In the defensive secondary, Oldham, Kamar, Orton, and Young, and Oldham may be the more lethal of that bunch. David Keating, number 82, is now in. Third down and three for UCLA, and the crowd is in the game. Aikman is back. Third and short goes to Farr. Farr is hit, brought down up around the 37, but that's enough for the first down. Mike Farr comes into this ball game as the leading receiver for Troy Aikman and the uh, Bruins. One of the things that uh, Steve Axman, the offensive coordinator from UCLA, expects the, the uh, Ducks to do today is take Farr away from him. He says we'll probably have to use him as a decoy a lot today, and that will leave... Uh, Keating, their third wide receiver, open a lot. From the 38-yard line, make it. And it's a first down for the Bruins. They go back to Eric Ball. This time, a little better reaction by the Oregon front. And they stop him after a two-yard pickup two at the 40. Cusano and uh, Whitney, an inside backer, making the stop. A couple of Californians on the roster. There are a lot of Californians on this Oregon football roster. 42 of them, as a matter of fact, versus only 30 players from the state of Oregon. So it's the population factor that we mentioned last week in the Washington State game where they have 44 Californians. Second down and seven. Aikman straight back, gets a little heat. Gets his pass away, and the pass is short, intended for Arbuckle, the tight end. Terry Donahue had to be a salesman this week in preparing his team to play a tough game on the road after their first loss of the season. He says this. I think that we've had a decent week of preparation. Uh, our football team obviously was wounded and disappointed and uh, discouraged. All of the emotions you go through when you go through losing. Uh, but on the other side of the coin, I think our players are mature enough to realize, and at least we tried to impress upon them, that we only have two choices. One is to come out here and get beat again, and the other is to get off the floor and whip Oregon and keep moving to the championship. And that's uh, the only two things that we can do, and uh, we're going to find out which one we want to do as soon as we tee it up and kick it off. Well, you just saw one of the things that uh, Oregon does not want to happen, and that's pick Troy Aikman to get to wandering around outside and pick up yardage. And in this instance, UCLA gets hit with a holding call as Aikman was sliding around to the right looking for a receiver. And the penalty flag came out of the pocket of the referee, and that's a, almost always holding. Referee standing right behind the quarterback and offensive line. Had a good look at it. Gordon Reese is the man in the white hat. They are just short of a first down. Holding offense, still third down. So that'll back them up 10 as we get the ball game underway. First possession for UCLA as they accepted the Oregon kickoff. Keating comes out of the ball game now and Lawrence Berkeley comes in. It'll be third down and 17 for UCLA. Crowd gets back into it. Stadium runs right down to the field. This is a football only building, and Troy Aikman gets good protection. Long pass all the way across the field, short of the first down as the pass is caught by Mike Farr. Troy had to throw that ball about 35 yards to get it to him. And he made the catch, but Darrell Reed ran him down before he could pick up the first down. And here comes Harold Barcade in the punt. He wanted to throw the ball inside, but the coverage was good. Forced him to throw it to the outlet man in the flat. And the uh, Ducks came up and made the tackle short of the first down. Barcade, who normally hangs it high, averaging just under 45 yards per punt. Deep man is Terry Obey for Oregon. Good return man. Very quick. That's a spinning, driving kick back at the 13 for Obi. Got one block, but not enough. And they'll take him down up around the 17, 16-yard line. 44-yard punt, a three-yard return, and Dion Lambert is downfield to make the tackle. Now we'll see what the Ducks that lethal in their offensive performance, that fourth and scoring uh, helped to a large degree by a very good defensive unit. 
They open from the 16-yard line, and Pete Delson is the man at quarterback replacing the injured Bill Musgrave. Here's the pick. It comes to Latin Berry, and Berry is up just short of the 20. The Ducks will line up offensively this way, with, uh, and there's a penalty flag on the field. Let's wait for a second here and see what that is. They've marked it at the 19. Well, here's the lineup as you saw the call. Nelson at quarterback. This is his fourth start in his career. Latin Berry is a veteran. Derek Lavelle is the quick tailback. The outside people are Obi and Archer, both very quick. Big people are Joe Merton, the tight end. Dykes, Cusco, Gilbert, Sunia, and Kunzman. And it's UCLA being hit with a personal foul penalty. So the Ducks here get a break, and now they've got some operating room. There's Terry Donahue, who admittedly uh, has not had a terribly pleasant week after the first loss and being knocked out of first place in the National Bowl. From the 34 now, it is a first down for Oregon, and they send Obi in motion, give the ball off to Latin Berry. Berry finds a little running room, and you've got another penalty flag. No, no flag this time. Powell. A lot of yellow out there. <laughs> Lovo, Lavelle carrying the ball. He is a 190-pound junior out of Pacifica, California. Number 42 is Latin Berry. He is a junior from Milwaukee, Oregon. The defensive unit for UCLA. That's as good a group of linebackers as you want to want to find. The defensive secondary for UCLA. Henley Turner, Darby, and Marcus Turner. And we may see some testing of that before the day is done. Deep. Well, it's second down and six. They take it inside. And Oregon is doing just about what you would have expected them to do in their first defensive possession uh, with the fresh quarterback in there. They're not going to be throwing it around. And one of the other things they're doing is spreading it out. See what they get out of different formations. Take a look at the nose tackle for UCLA. Number 66 is Waller as he does a little arm over the center, Gilbert. Gilbert tries to get back to make the play. Waller is the best defensive lineman on that UCLA uh, front. A strong tackle. Kunzman hobbled off the field a moment ago for Oregon, replaced by Todd Taanaki. So Oregon already has lost a big man, and here's a little setup for the screen pass. And Berry, with some daylight, gets a first down up across the 45. Latin Berry brought down by Randy Beverly. So that's, again, going to the safe route to get your quarterback some confidence. Exactly. A smart call. Bob Toledo, offensive coordinator, says we like to screen. And it's a, a confidence builder right there. As you see Barry sneaking out. Number 60 is Husco comes out and gets a nice block. They screen a lot. They're a big screening football team. Ball is just short of the 46, and it's a first down for Oregon with uh, Hargain in there now at a wide-out position as the Ducks go to trips on the left side. Caught by Nelson, throws it down the sideline, intended for Hargain, and it is almost intercepted by Darrell Henley. Hargain couldn't get to it, but Henley did get a hold of it and couldn't hold it. He rushed it. He had the man, if he would have waited a little bit longer, it was going to come open. And the problem is, some of these times, when you work all week in practice, you come in with some ideas that this play is going to work, and you run them in practice, and they work great in practice. But when you come out in a ball game, you cannot predetermine where you're going to throw the football. That time, Nelson made up his mind it was going to be like it was in practice, and that's not the way it was. Second and ten. Well, he's going right to work. Come back the other way to Lavelle. And Lavelle shakes a tackler. And will have about three yards up the sideline. And a penalty flag. Gordon Reese, the referee, checking with his other people. Umpires James Coyne, Charles Stewart, the head linesman, Roger McMinn, the line judge. Field judge is Colin McDermott. The foul for an ineligible downfield on the offense will be waved off. The pass was caught behind the line. Third down. So Colin McDermott is the field judge, and the side judge is Dave Becker with the day, uh, Bob Rao, the uh, back judge. 
That's a rule in college football that a lineman can be downfield, but he's blocking it. The pass is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. And that was another screen pass, two screen passes already uh, in the first of five or six plays by the Ducks. Third down and eight now for Oregon with 9.34 to go in the first quarter and no score. UCLA in the white shirt, Oregon in the home, green and gold. And timeout called by Oregon. So you remember, you got a young man making his only his fourth start at quarterback for the Ducks. All right, here comes Nelson, third down and eight. They've had their conference on the sidelines. And back he goes, and the Bruins come after him, and he gets it away underneath. There's an incomplete forward pass, the pass intended for Sam Archer, dragging across the middle, and Dion Lambert broke it up. Oregon now will have to punt. UCLA had one offensive possession. They had to punt. The punter for the Ducks is Ted Milburn. He's a senior from Bellevue, Washington. And it's Daryl Henley deep for UCLA. He's dangerous. Bruins peel back. Good kick by Milburn. And they force a fair catch signal. The ball takes a bounce. Stopped it. Down just short of the goal line. They got away with it. Scott Kozak hustling downfield. The punt was 51 yards. And I thought the Ducks kicked it into the end zone, but I guess not. They did kick it into the end zone, and I'm surprised it's not a touchback coming back out. The first, the first well, player down made a nice in. play to keep it out but then you have to keep it out. That's right. And the second man came along, kicked it in. Now, yeah, here we go. They're going to bring it out. Yeah. That's the right call. The ball was touched on the one-yard line. It went into the end zone for a touchback. It'll be first and 10 on the 20. So that makes it a 52-yard punt. Nice play by <laughs> Kozak, 49. But the second man kicks it into the end zone. Yep. And so the Ducks exulting. They thought they had the Bruins pinned and didn't quite. And UCLA's second possession will begin at their own 20. Ball has it. Got a good block from Estrick to get him around the corner. And they'll mark Eric out right around the 30 for a 10-yard pickup. Looking across the hills and into the, the, the west is where the storm allegedly was coming from, it looks fairly peaceful right now, so we may get lucky and get most of the ball game played before it gets here. Let's hope we get all of it played. So it's packing some win. First down for the Bruins at their own 30. No score, first quarter. Aikman, first down pass, wide to the outside to Brendan McCracken. And McCracken, a former quarterback, gets it up across the 40, and he is very close to another first down where Oldham brought him down. Well, Penn State won a game today. It looked for a time as if Joe's folks might have a little trouble avoiding uh, a losing season. Gosh, they haven't had one since uh, daylight savings time came into effect. <laughs> that Houston run and shoot must have been working today, huh? You know, Wyoming's got to play Houston. That'll be down the road. Yeah. You may need a calculator to add that one up. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's another first down for the Bruins. So they've gone wide here a couple of times successfully. Well, just over the 40. The wind is at the back of UCLA. What there is, it's not very strong at this point. Aikman gives it to Eric Ball. Cuts it back into the middle. And number 21 comes up to hit him, Tom Kalmeyer. But Terry Donahue, more than anyone else, has been fretting over the fact that his football team has not been running the ball very well the last two weeks. Balance, balance is so important that he told me this yesterday as I talked to him. 
this is not a particularly good team to try to run it on. Uh, they have a very stout defensive front, and they play the run extremely well. Uh, but I would agree with your assessment. We need to be balanced. We can't be a one-dimensional team and just have Troy Aikman. Well, number 43, David Cousineau blasted his way through there. He's a big guy, 6'2", 255, comes out of Folsom, California. And he takes the runner, ball down. And brings up third down and four. Well, so far in uh, the two possessions UCLA has had, Terry has got the balance he wants. Aikman's picked up 30 yards throwing, and Eric Ball's picked up 25 yards running. Third and four. Aikman. They get him the whole wide side of the field, and he takes off and gets the first down. He goes crashing into the sideline because he was running for the marker. Oldham was trying to come across and cut him off before he got there. Not much contact between the two, and Aikman goes sliding across the Oregon side of the field. You worry a little bit when your quarterback is headed toward that concrete wall because there's not a lot of room between the wall and the playing field. And on that situation, Aikman was going for the uh, first down marker, so it wasn't that he was avoiding the defensive back, Oldham, who was coming. There was going to be a collision because he wanted to get the first down. Of course, that's how Oregon lost their quarterback last week as he was trying to pick up the first down. It's first down for the Bruins on the Oregon 49. Eric Ball cuts back into the middle, and he's picked up around the 47-yard line for pickup of about two or three yards. And number 46, Leroy Ale, a junior from Carson, California, made the hit. And Oldham, Chris Oldham, is injured and down on the play for Oregon. Take a look at this play. Ali is right here. Now the center, Cornish, is going to slip through and try to make the play. But Ali will run underneath him to try to make the to end, and actually make the play. Cornish has got a good angle, but there's a big gap, and Ali gets underneath him to make the tackle. Well, they're holding the head of Chris Oldham very gently as if he might have been dinged around the head. But we've got a timeout for him right now. Chris Oldham, the man for whom the timeout was taken, jumped up, ran off the field. He's got to stay out one play. He looks like he's all right and ready to come back in. It's second down and eight for UCLA. They send Mike Farr in motion and pitch it back to Eric Ball. And Ball is hit right about the line of scrimmage by Dave Cusano, who's doing an awful lot of posing right now after he has uh, made the hit. I'm not sure that'll go down too well with Rich Brooks. Well, the way he's playing will go down well with Brooks. Yes, he will. Nose tackle, Cousineau filling in uh, very ably this year at the nose tackle position. You have to be quick, and you have to be able to control the center, and he's got a, a major task today in trying to control Frank, Frank Cornish, one of the finer centers in the country. Third and seven. Aikman back, looks at far, goes underneath, Keating. Ricochet catch, first down, inside the 30, and down to the 27. Keating is a traffic catcher, and he made a good one right there. Well, we mentioned a little earlier that Keating may get a lot of activity. He's up here. Four is the man who leads the team. He's going to decoy to the outside, and Keating's going to come into the inside and watch as Aikman takes the ball, reads the coverage. Man-to-man -man coverage. There's nobody in the middle of the field. And Keating does a nice job to hang on. So it's a first down Bruins, Oregon 26. Aikman very quickly goes to far, far against Oldham. Oldham holds him till help comes. But there's still a pickup of about nine yards on the play. Five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. There is no score, but UCLA is now threatening. Oldham is one of the men that uh, has really come on this year for the Oregon Ducks, number two. He has four interceptions, and he is second in the NCAA in kickoff returns. He's an outstanding player, a little bit aggressive, and uh, the Bruins may try to go after him deep a little later. On second and two, give it to Eric Ball. Ball is dropped short of the line of scrimmage. And it looks like uh, Ale and Kozak were the two who combined for the tackle. 
Aikman in his passing so far today is five out of six for 58 yards. I'll tell you one thing, Terry Donahue is giving Eric Ball every opportunity in the world uh, to uh, reassert himself as the top running back on the team. Third and one. The offensive line surge for UCLA looks to have the first down at the Oregon 15-yard line. Tomorrow, ABC Sports offers racing. First at 10.30 in the morning, Eastern and Pacific, 9.30 Central. Some 23,000 runners take off in the New York City Marathon. That'll be live except on the West Coast. And then at 4 Eastern time, 3 Central and Pacific, the top Indy drivers will meet in the final kart race of the year, the Nissan Indy Challenge from Miami. Tomorrow on ABC Sports. UCLA holding the ball a long time and piling up plays and time and it's ball running out of one tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Scott, Ko Scott Kozak had his hands on him but uh, ball just high stepped away from him. Chris Oldham only 5'9 in only his third year of organized football. He played as a senior in high school for the first time and then came to the University of Oregon as a prop 48 meaning he had to sit out his first year, couldn't play, played last year, and then again this year, and is doing an outstanding job. Alabama, leading LSU, second quarter. We have a correction on the clock. The clock should read 4.03. Well, they've got to take a moment to put some time back on it. Kind of nice to have these digital clocks. Remember the old days back when you were playing? We had to sit around. <laughs> what do you mean? I've been nice to you all year. <laughs> Don't wind them back. Uh, old days. <laughs> I'm amazed at Troy Aikman. You know, we've seen him four or five times this year, and on this drive here today, you know, he just he finds where the weakness is and just doesn't do anything that. It is forcing, just finds where they give it to him and gets it, gets it to the receiver. So second down. And a little more than 10. And there's contact. And the Oregon defender pointing at Lance Zeno says that he moves. And he did. Watch to the left side there. Right there is number 79, Lance Zeno. That's enough, and that is one of the problems that UCLA has had this year. They have had an awful lot of penalties and comes at different times, crucial times for the most part. The, the, uh, there are only two other teams in the Pac-10 that have been penalized more than UCLA. The ball is just inside the Oregon 21 now. That's Mike Farr going in motion. Aikman back to the end zone, far all alone, but there is a penalty flag. Hold it. That was thrown by one of the linesmen from the side of the field. I mean, far was lonesome. It's against UCLA. Daryl Reed had no idea where Mike Farr was on that play. But it's illegal use of hands or offensive pass interference, one way or the other, on the call. Pass interference. Offense. Loss of down. Third down. Well, the news about that, Bob, is it's loss of down with it. Right. Watch the back right here as he comes out. There's going to be a collision right in this area here. We'll see if we can stop him when he gets close. Watch the pullback. Now right here. Right. Hold it up. Right there. Right there is the problem. That is offensive pass interference. The offensive man has to go around the defensive man when you're in the secondary. That's the fourth penalty against UCLA at the 45 yards and the loss of a touchdown. No penalties on Oregon. Third down and very long. 
Aikman under deep pressure whistles it it is incomplete and Troy gets up a little gingerly as uh, Cusano and Taylor just really put him on the deck well the key to that play was the pressure the, one of the problems UCLA has had this year is pass protection Mike Adamley mentioned a little bit earlier Richie Brooks says we want to get after him get some pressure on him there was no way he could have completed that pass. Not, on, not from your back. He just got rid of it, not to take the sack. That brings Velasco in for a man-size field goal try of 53 yards. And he's got enough foot on it, and he got it. 53-yard field goal, and UCLA takes the longest of his career. Chris Oldham, number two, Lattenberry, 42, are the deep people to return the kickoff of Kurt Maggio. We had a bit of an upset in the Big Ten today with Illinois beating Indiana 21-20. kicks it. He gets it up pretty well, which gives normally good defensive coverage by UCLA. But look at this. Oldham finds a lot of daylight. And Chris is all the way back to the 39-yard line. And here's Mike Adam Lee. Well, Keith, as you mentioned at the top of the show, Oregon playing without their outstanding sophomore quarterback, Bill Musgrave, broke his collarbone last week against Arizona State. He underwent surgery yesterday to have pins put in that collarbone. Bob Greasy and I stopped by the hospital last night in Eugene just to say hello. And Bill had this to say to his teammates. He said, I'm sorry I can't be with you. But listen, don't let down. We still have a chance to have a great season and go to the bowl game. The coaching staff and the team, Bill, they know you're watching. They wish you the best as well. Keith. All right, Mike thinks, and good luck to Bill. He's got two years left. Pete Nelson, a junior, making his fourth start today. Throws underneath to his tight end, and Merton picks up nine yards, close to ten. On the catch, just short of the 49. We've got time remaining at 23.25 to go in the first quarter. Oregon now trying to manifest offense. Pete Nelson knows that he is the leader of this offensive ball club now, that Musgrave is in the hospital and out. And the team has to rally around him. It's the Musgrave's team before this, and it's Nelson's team from here on out. Incidentally, Todd Kunzman, who hobbled off the field, has come back after getting an ankle retake. He's back in there at right tackle. And handling the ball is Derek Laville. And he may have the first down. You know, Keith, when Mike and I were at the hospital yesterday yeah. visiting uh, Bill Musgrave, he got a phone call from uh, Grand Junction, Colorado, which is his hometown, from a lady he didn't know that was at a football stadium, just to call him and telling him that his younger brother, who was a senior in high school, had thrown three touchdown passes in the first quarter, and uh, he thought that Bill would, uh, would feel a little bit better knowing that his brother was doing, doing pretty well. I would say. First down, just short of midfield now for Oregon. UCLA leading 3 to nothing. Nelson pitches the ball out to Lattenberry. He stops, cuts it back. And will pick up three, close to four. Good pursuit by Eric Smith of UCLA. Your youngest had a pretty good quarterback outing, didn't he, this week? Yes, he did. Young Brian, eighth grader. He surprised me. He threw the ball well. He's a linebacker, too. <laughs> I'm more proud of him being tough as a linebacker than I'm a quarterback. <laughs> Rich Brooks went to school up at Oregon State. He backed up Terry Baker. Tommy Prothero when they were in school up there. I remember when he played. Did some games. Second down. Long six. Short seven. Nelson's pressure. Passes away. And it is incomplete. And Nelson is still down. Bob Brothers, son of Paul, is the backup. And Nelson took a hard lick from Mike Lodish. He's had back trouble, and he took that hit partially in the back. Take another look. He wanted to throw it a little sooner. It's like they got him up around the shoulders and the head. I don't know. He was met there by both defensive ends. 
That number 19 uh, is Bob Brothers. He's a redshirt freshman, lives in Eugene. His dad, Paul Brothers, was a quarterback at Oregon State. Lodish is number 94. He's going to come around. And there will be a defensive man from the other side, from the right side of the screen. Yeah, Smith from the other side. Right there. Looked like you might have popped him in the head. Got a collision of helmets. I think if it, if it would have just been Lodish, the blow would have taken him away. But the other UCLA man coming up, I think he maybe just had a little cobwebs. Uh, He's cobwebs. got to come out now. And yeah. Brothers is going to have to come in for at least one snap. Brothers is third down and seven. Brothers has only thrown 24 passes and completed eight, but he's had five interceptions, and that has been the problem with the backup quarterbacks at Oregon. On third down, out of the eye. Well, he's going to put it up, and lucky that one was not picked off because Eric Turner, the sophomore out of Ventura, California, was splashing across the field and came within a hair's breadth of uh, picking it off, and there wasn't a thing between him and the goal line except some artificial surface and fresh air. Turner, just a sophomore, intercepted three passes last year as a freshman, one of them for a touchdown. All right, let's watch Daryl Hindley now as he goes back for Ted Novin's punt. Last time, the ball was kicked over his head. Had a little pressure on Milburn, but it's a high hanger. And Henley has to fair catch it back at the 12. So it is a fairly efficient punt for Milburn of 35 yards. And UCLA will start back around the 134 in the first quarter. And Bob, do you feel that the Oregon defensive people had a reasonably decent series last time? UCLA, though, hurt themselves more than anything else with their penalties. But this might very well be a big defensive series for the Oregon team. Eric Ball carrying and Scott Kozak making the tackle. I've been calling uh, Dave Cousano. It's Cusano. I'll get it right. That's the way it is in the media guide. It's pronounced Cusano. Cus yeah. Cusano, I'm sorry. Yeah. Cusano. Sometimes well, these guys... Note in. You never know which is right. On UCLA's last possession, they had 15 plays, wound up with a 53-yard field goal. The play goes inside, just straight dive over the right side with the fullback Estrick carrying. And Mark is over the 15. Inside a minute to go now in the first quarter. Third down, hooks it to the sideline, far, looks back just in time, and Mike makes the catch at the 25. So Reed lost him again. A big third down conversion coming into the ball game. Aikman had completed 68% on third down. That's more than he normally completes. He's better on third down. And far with a nice catch. Both hands underneath the football. Good call. With the first quarter is over. UCLA 3, Oregon. The Oregon band plays no matter the weather. Rain or shine. Their uniforms, waterproof. Uh, that's the truth. <laughs> and it's first down UCLA from the 25. As Troy Aikman play action. Gets it off. Incomplete. Should have kept it. See, Troy kind of go up to his head and realize that I could have picked up 10 yards if I'd have just kept it. First quarter numbers. Twice as many plays almost for UCLA in the first quarter. The bottom of the screen, the time of possession, almost twice as much for UCLA also. 
six total yards to 32. UCLA dominating the first quarter. Three nothing Bruins leading on that 53 yard field goal by Velasco. UCLA has been flagged four times in the ball game, 45 yards, and one of those penalties cost them a touchdown. Second down and ten. That's the fullback, and he is rolled up. Back at the 24, short of the line of scrimmage, Pisano, playing the nose tackle position, did most of the work, and here's Mike Adamley. Keith, good news from the Oregon bench. Quarterback Pete Nelson just had his bell rung. He'll be back on the next series. Not so fortunate is Pete's face mask after that hit he took by Mike Lodish and Eric Smith. It bent the front bar. It's out for the season. Keith? Man, that's a tough position, that quarterback. I'll tell you. <laughs> Third down, close to 11 now. Crowd gets into it. Aikman looks down the middle for more. Moore reverses direction, goes back the other way, breaks open, and can't hold on to the bullet that Aikman delivered. Troy threw that just a tad uh, behind him. He was a little behind him. He was more wide open than, than anybody that Aikman had open in the first quarter. Sometimes you don't expect him to be that wide open, and you just try to lay it in there. And you should just go ahead and throw it. Barcade's second punt, that's OB deep. Harold's first kick today with the 44-yarder. Into the little breeze. Good kick again, gets it to turn over. OB at his 35, 45, and 49. Good return, John Winnick finally brought it down. 40-yard punt and a 14-yard return for Terry Hobie. Uh, during uh, the time we were away, there was almost a desperate moment on the Oregon sideline until they found a helmet to fit Pete Nelson, who's back in. And the Ducks have it first down at their own 49. And carrying the ball, the fullback Lattenberry for a couple of yards. Uh, and the Nelson, they, and the, uh, the uh, helmet that they found for Nelson was uh, third-string quarterback John Oaken. Well, that's the problem sometimes. Guys are pretty particular about their helmets. They don't want anybody touching their helmets. A lot of guys. I remember when I was playing that there were some guys on defense that never wanted anybody to touch your helmet to clean it or anything. The equipment man was in trouble. He ever got near their helmet. Yeah. It's a very vital part of the equipment, isn't it? No question. Second down at about eight. This is Perry. And he's got a first down near the UCLA 40. So in this series now, it appears that Rich Brooks wants, and uh, Bob Toledo want to go to a little misdirection. Take a look at the line splits, how big the uh, holes are in between the offensive linemen. Hunt's going to pull this way. It's a trap play. Whenever an offensive lineman pulls behind the line of scrimmage, Hunt, number 57, the guy just runs himself out of the play. That's Kelly, 65. Nice play for the Ducks. Scott Boatwright is in at center now, snapping the ball. And Nelson back, buying time on the road, delivers to the tight end. Mertens, and he can't hold on. At the top of his leap, Dion Lambert hit him, and the ball came out. But the pass was there. That, I think, perhaps is very important, because Junior Pete Nelson is under the gun here today. Oregon needs at least one more win, if not two more, to probably get a bowl bid. Four games remaining. They play at Hawaii in the last game, so therefore they get 12 ball games. Second down and 10 for Oregon. Just short of the Bruin 40. This is Lavelle. First man couldn't hold him, and he slides ahead about uh, three yards. Rich Brooks had this comment yesterday about the need to put the ball on the ground and move it. We're going to have to run the ball against them, uh, Keith. Uh, our success uh, as an offensive football team uh, very much depends on us being able to run the ball at least uh, enough to be a nuisance, and uh, we'd hope to run it much better than that. UCLA's defensive front is uh, one of the best ones we've seen, with the exception of USC. They're the best one we've seen. So uh, I think it's going to be hard, but uh, it's something that uh, we're going to have to do. 
It's third down and seven. Whistle, stop him. I think the clock ran out on him. It did. I saw the 25 second clock go black it's just before the snap of the ball. You got 25 second clocks at each end. Clear vision for the quarterback. Sometimes you just forget to look at him, Keith. This was a third down situation, a, a big play to continue the drive. UCLA goes to their nickel package. You want to know what coverage you're going to be in. You've got a big play coming in from the sideline with lots of extra receivers. You just forget to look at him. Now it becomes third and 12. Nelson straight back, pressure coming, pass away down the middle, overthrew the receiver, and the pass is picked off by Eric Turner. An easy interception for Eric Turner. And so the old interception problem continues for Pete Nelson. Well, it's been a long time between interceptions for UCLA. Last year, they were ranked fourth in the country in takeaways. This year, they're last in the Pac-10. Turner getting his first one of the year. As I mentioned, last year as a freshman, he had three picks. Well, that's the first turnover for Oregon. They had seven last week. Four fumbles and three interceptions in the loss of a point to Arizona State. Bruins go to work now as Aikman drills one. Complete to the tight end, Randy Austin. And Randy's across the 35 and out of bounds close at around the 40 as they finally settle it down here and put it down. It'll be the 37 and it'll be a first down. Brian Brown is the tailback now. Maury Toy is the fullback. Moore comes wide to the bottom of your picture. There with McCracken. From the 37, this is Brian Brown. Just about the line of scrimmage. Matt Brock, number 92 involved. Brock 6'5", 265, a senior out of San Diego, California. And one of the finer players on this uh, Oregon team, the uh, defensive uh, end. Scouts are looking at him pretty uh, pretty highly to go in the NFL draft, as is uh, Scott Kozak, the linebacker who plays right next to him. Second and ten. Brown, a good receiver, swings out of the backfield in motion. Aikman goes down the middle for our buckle. He's hit, catches the ball on the bounce and holds on. Arbuckle, a very, very good, tough receiver down the middle, and he made a very tough catch right there at the 40. Mark Wynn was all over him. And Wynn is the nickelback. Denny Shuler, the defensive coordinator for Oregon, getting in his nickel package as soon as he possibly can. Arbuckle missed four ball games earlier this year with a knee problem. Back and healthy now. All right, both tight ends come off the field now. And on third down, and about seven, Bruins go with three wide outs and put far in motion. Pressure coming, they've got him. Back inside the 30, Tom Palmeyer, number 21. It's a sophisticated nickel package. Here's Kalmar here. But look at the other linebackers all standing up here. He's just going to come around the outside. This is a problem for a quarterback and an offensive line to know who is blocked and who isn't. That time the confusion won out in a sack for Oregon. There are 10 ducks up front now. Looks like they're going after Barkate. Nope, oh, they peel it off. Kick is short, however, and Jerry Obi will make the fair catch at the Oregon 42. Only a 29-yard play. UCLA leading 3-0, 9-10 to go in the first half. Single back, hand it off to it, and it is Lovell getting up around the 46. 
Injuries very much a part of the Oregon story of late. Here's Mike Adamley with part of the injury story. Well, Keith, not only did the Ducks lose the quarterback Bill Musgrave, but also their outstanding inside linebacker Mark Kearns. I know you'd love to be out there, Mark, but the defense looks pretty well this afternoon. Yeah, this is a great opportunity for us. And I know the defense is up all week getting ready for the game. It's one of those games we've got to get out, go out and win for ourselves and um, hope the offense with Nelson does well today. Quickly, why the Yankees cap? I don't know. I'm a Yankee fan at heart. I like the A's too, though. George Steinberg, if you're listening, sign him up. <laughs> Lovell carries the ball. Picks up a couple of more yards. Gets up to about the 49. They've got to go to the UCLA 48 to get their first down. So they need three on third down. Stacy Argo is now in at a linebacker position for the Bruins. It was a tough we a loss last week for uh, the Ducks. Not only did they lose the uh, Arizona State game, but they also lost their quarterback in Kearns, who was their leading tackle going into the ball game. Inside, they get the first down on set blocking as Laville carries. And moves the ball down to the UCLA 46. John Pryor brought him down. So Oregon is still probing, still trying things to find out uh, where they might find something that's working. And right now, Bob, it looks like they're finding the room between the tackles. Yeah, they are. And they came in as the uh, leader in the pack hit and giving the ball away offensively so they don't want to turn it over. There's pressure and the heat this time gets in. Uh, Billy Ray blitzing from the outside, an outside backer. And nobody of any consequence got in Billy's way and so he just blew him down. Loss is back to about the Oregon 46 yard line. You see that band there on Pete Nelson's left arm? That's where he's got the plays marked. That's to help him out. And what they'll do sometimes is just single, signal a number, and he'll look down to whatever the number is, 16 or 18, and the play will be right there. So it's second down, and it looks to be very close to 20. That pitch is behind the ball carrier, Randy Wilhite. And Randy can never find time to get up ahead of steam, and Doug Klein searches him out of the crowd and brings him down. That name Will Height might mean something to you because he's the second Will Height to play here at Oregon. Third down and long. And Tom Hayes yesterday talking to me had this comment uh, about his defensive secondary, what they're going to try to do and uh, defensively to get after Pete Nelson. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, let's see if what he had in mind works. They don't go after him here. The pass is thrown down the sidelines and the pass was incomplete on third down. What actually he said was that uh, they're going to lay their ears back and bother him at time. Well, you got to figure there, Nelson's probably thinking, oh my goodness, here they come. And I got a, a sideline pattern call, they're going to kill me, but they didn't come. Well, as it does a nice job, uh, Hayes, uh, the defensive coordinator, along with Bob Field for UCLA, of calling the plays, mixing it up. And of course, he's got a nice group of athletes to work with on that defense. All right, Milburn is in the front again, and Henley back. 52 and 35, the yardage on the two kicks by Ted Milburn so far today. There's a little pressure, but he gets it out of there, and it's a good hanging kick. Back at the 10. Their catch by Darrell Henry. 43-yard punt, 6.28 to go, first half. Looks like he's got an ankle problem. That'll bring Brian Brown in. And so one of the worries of Terry Donahue and his coaching staff continues. The lack of real punch on the ground. Not that they don't have a lot of runners. Take a look. Right there, his right ankle twisted underneath the tackler. That's smart. Brown, searching around, can't find any room. Cusano and company, there to nail him down. Scott Whitney, number 54, also in on it. There is short there. Second down at about nine for the Bruins. We've got 5.50 to go. 
Al Trotreg will bring you up to date at halftime on the potential halftime report. Brown's looking around. For <laughs> I forgot he said the snap count. <laughs> so he looks up, says something to somebody, and uh, Aikman looked back at him. And in the meantime, uh, there was movement along the offensive front. And it'll cost him five yards. And you know what? I mean, that just, that's like a cuckle burr under Terry Donahue's saddle. Here you are, closing down toward the end of the season with all the big, big ball games. And uh, you make a, a little mistake like that. Brown is just a sophomore. Aikman certainly, uh, being the senior that he is, uh, Snapcats. I think he knew that. <laughs> that played for a long time and forgot snapcats. Second down at about 14. They give it off to Brown. Up the middle. Back to about the original line of scrimmage. The 25. Well, at least you know when you're working along the line, if you forget your snap count, you just sit there and somebody hit you. Well, <laughs> you, you ask your buddy. You know, yeah. I used to do that a lot. I'd forget the snap count. That was the last thing I was concerned about. And we had a signal. I'd ask the center right out loud, what's, this, what's it on? And he'd give me a color, red, white, or blue. Yeah. And you know, that meant what snap count was. So you get those little systems after you forget it a number of times. Third down and ten. Brown in motion, that gives him tips on the left side. On top of the picture, and Aikman shoots it down the middle, and that should have been picked off. Palmer had it in his hands, and just simply didn't hold it. And Tom had a lot of help on that side of the field. So it could have been a very big play for the Ducks. Well, this defense, <laughs> this defense held Aikman and UCLA to its lowest passing total of the year last year, only 130 yards. We told you, very sophisticated nickel package, tough to throw against. Now, Barkett is back in, 10 ducks up on the line. OB is deep, standing just inside his own 40. If he handles the ball all right, they should get field position again. They haven't done anything with it so far. This time the Ducks go, and Barkade hits a high, high hanger that Obi calls fair catch up around his own 45. So once again, Oregon Ducks have a lot of scrimmage and picks up a couple of yards. He's a little bigger than he looks. It, it, when you just look at him, you'd say, well, he's probably 175 pounds. Not true. He's 190. Number two in the Pac-10 and rushing. Has good vision, good feet. If the hole is not where it is supposed to be, he can slide one way or the other. Doesn't have a lot of great speed, but good vision. They get a three-yard pickup and second down and seven. Pete Nelson gets his pass away. The pass is caught by Terry Obi. And a first down. Here's the comment we alluded to a moment ago. UCLA's co-defensive coordinator Tom Hayes talking about the Bruin defense. We're zone, but we're a matchup basketball terminology-wise uh, zone team. We, when you get in our zone, we're going to grab a hold of you too and pattern read and, and, and try to play tight zone if you want to put it that way. And uh, in effect, help the rush if we can. And it kind of works both ways. Well, they get burned there. First down on the 44, down the middle. Nelson hits his tiny and Mertens for another first down to the UCLA 26-yard line. Russell Lawson is in there at the tailback position right now for Oregon. And so suddenly, Pete Nelson gets a hot hand. More confidence to start completing a couple of passes. Those things happen. Wilhite checks into the backfield. So you've got Lawson at 34 and Wilhite 24. And a first down. Oregon at the UCLA 26. Bruins leading three to nothing. Wilhite cannot get loose. 66. Jim Waller nose guard reached in and got him as he went by. Loss of a yard. Lost 
Lawson out. Lowville in. Lowville. Emphasis. Second down, close to 12. OB in motion. Nelson back. Passes away. OB catches. And uh, Waller catches him just as the ball arrives. So Big Jim now has had two big plays in this defensive series for UCLA. Right over the nose, number 66. This was supposed to be a screen pass. Watch the offensive lineman go to your left, and the wide receiver was coming back in. The problem was Waller was blocked a little bit too well. Had a little bit too much problem getting back to the quarterback, and so he was kind of hanging around. When the receiver came back to catch the football. And look what I found. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Third and the 12. Blitz. Up the middle. They get burned on the blitz. Randy Wilhite. They sit Craig Davis on an all-out blitz. And they found the hole that he vacated. There's Davis right here. Now watch as he blitzes a perfect call as the man is going to come right to the inside of him. Offensive line traps, picks up the trap, block on the other inside linebacker, and a nice play. And first down, Oregon at the UCLA 14. That's against Oregon. That's poor timing. Poor timing. The quarterback took too long to get the snap count. The offensive line, he held his cadence. He was waiting for the wide receiver to come across in most, and that play was all fouled up. Coachman is the first one to move. You watch me. Rich Brooks has done an outstanding job at Oregon, especially the last five years. They've won 28 and lost 24, and they've won 15 of their last 22 games. Dead ball, ball start, offense, still first down. That moves them back to the 19-yard line. He was at, at UCLA in 1976 as an assistant coach under Terry Donahue. It's first and 15 from the 19 of UCLA. Nelson gives it to Latin Berry, who steps out of a tackle. That's a good run there. That is a good, tough run. Eric Turner finally brought it down. Uh, tackle over there. He should be able to step, pick him up, and lay him down. In 1967, he was the Pac-10 champion in the long jump and the triple jump. He was the first man in 27 years to win both in the same year. And just for good measure, he went back this year in 1988 and repeated as the triple jump champion. He picked up 10 yards on that carry. It's second down and five. This is Laville. That was one of those plays where it, normally when you're running wide, sooner or later you're going to have to put your head down. And there he did. And got a couple. More like three. So it'll be third here and two. Which one do you believe? One quarterback is signaling the hot play. The other one is a dummy. They both did the same thing, though. <laughs> <laughs> Up the middle for a first down. Derek Lowe. He had to go inside the four. And it appears he's got just enough. I think they'll want the change here. One seconds to go first half. UCLA leading three to nothing on a 53-yard field goal by Alfredo Velasco. And 
a very important measurement right here for the Oregon Ducks. They have it. They have two timeouts remaining. Oregon does, and they're going to spend one right here. So with 31 seconds to play in the first half, they have it first and goal at the UCLA four. Oregon's Rich Brooks on the left. UCLA's Terry Donahue on the right.